So welcome to part seven. This is going to be very brief because if you would like to learn more about what's been going on since part six, I was doing a live stream. It's quite long, but there's a link in the description here on the, if you're watching this on the YouTube and there will be a link on the web page too, to the recording of the live stream. During that stream, we were implementing the parser for the uh, assembler, or at least the beginning of it. And we got it working. You can see it up in here on the side. I'll just summarize that and show you in just a minute. And did we make any changes to anything else? I don't think so. No, we did not. Uh, so we spent most of the time in here writing this out. What we've introduced is uh, a couple of things. We have a Pratt style parser that uses a dispatch table with prefix and infix parslets for handling uh, precedence and stuff like that. We have introduced a new structure called a node for describing an, an AST or maybe an you know SSA thing later, who knows? But the thingies that we parse as a node is really simple right now. It has a type where we can reuse just the token for from the scanner that we looked at in the previous part. We have the source location for it um, and as well as some data fields depending on the type of the node. And the actual, the actual parser itself ended up being fairly small. We uh, gave, we gave the, uh, the scanner here a better name for advanced the parser since we ended up just kind of calling it on. It's sort of logically more what it does rather than like scan tool, which is technically, I guess, more correct, but advanced advance, um, makes more sense. And I here starts some of the, the, the parse code that we wrote or I wrote. Is it I or we? I don't know. I want to feel like we're doing this together, but really it's just like me, right? This. <laughs> uh, so we implemented two parslets. One that is a prefix parslet for the um, for the register type uh, of token. And it's really straightforward. We create one of these nodes that we that we defined and we set its value to the current numeric value that's been parsed, right? So for register one over here, it would be one. And then we advance the parser to the next token. And then we wrote an infix parslet for the equality operator. This one takes a thing on the left side in the example here, it'll get a register. So it'll receive it here and then it will parse an expression on the right hand side, which in our example will be as not a register. And it builds up uh, uh, yet another node with operands. Instead of uh, an integer value, this type of node will have two operands, which is the sort of the, the left hand side and the right hand side of the, uh, the assignment. Then we have the, then we have the uh, parser dispatch table. This maps a token to uh, a a prefix parslet and or an infix parslet. So we see that for register tokens, we have our register prefix parslet up here. And for the uh, the equal sign, we have our inf equal infix parser for the assignment here. And comments we just ignore and all the other tokens will have just zero here. And we're, we're sort of saying that, you know, to do essentially for those things. And we'll keep adding to this table as we add more parse functions for more types of things. And finally, we have the, the sort of the, um, the, the, the less specific, the, the root parse function, whatever, a parse is like a, a, any statement uh, and expects a semicolon explicit or implicit at the end. And this one is the sort of the, the thing that does the lookup in the table. So it takes the current token that's been scanned which we've primed the parser now before we call this the first time. So it takes the, it looks for a prefix parslet. It's an error if it doesn't find one. And at this point we will find a lot because we're still working on it. The next thing it does is that it calls that prefix parslet. And so what happens here is really just like calling one of these functions, right? So it will call the, the parser disk function. And the result from that will be a node. 
Uh, and we have some code here just to catch some errors, some programming errors as we're working on this. And the next thing that it does is that it looks for an infix parcel parcelet matching the token that comes after here. So in the case of, you know, we have a, you know, register, what's it? Um, register one equals like register zero, then will be, will be, will be here, right? Um, at this point, and then, sorry, at this point, we'll be there. And after we parse that, the parser is now here. And there is a infix parslet for the equal sign. So we'll look that up and we'll pass along the thing that we just parsed into there, to the infix function. And we keep doing that as, as long as we have infix parslets available for the next token that we got. And as long as the, the precedence there is the same or, or higher, we just keep wrapping essentially um, tokens, uh, sorry, nodes that we're parsing in SD nodes. And we can see that wrapping effect over here. So this is the result of, of parsing the sample program. Um, so we sample program here, let me scroll it up. Oh, it's in a different file, of course. So here's our sample program. These two, we just looked at that. We'll, uh, uh, we'll have this wrapping effect. First, we parse the R1, right? And then the infix thing comes into play and we pass the kind of throw that in there and that parses another one and that that uh, wraps those two uh, into one. And that's how we got the, the tree structure from this type of uh, parser, this type of Pratt parser. And yeah, so, uh, so that was a success. We ended up uh, parsing a very simple but yet valid uh, tiny chunk of our assembly language here. And in the next, in the next part, let me save that, change this to name. In the next part, we'll be looking at expanding this parser to cover the entire example factorial function. And that includes all of the syntax of, of this, which looks like a lot, but is probably going to be pretty, pretty little code to add to our already existing parser. Most of the infrastructure is there. After that, will be, and let me switch back to uh, the assembly assembler file here. So after that, uh, we'll be working on the analysis pass, which also I suspect will be very minimal. We might actually not even need it for to complete, you know, our example function. So this will do things like making sure that, you know, um, if you, that types match and stuff like that. And then what we'll do next is the code generation to generate these uh, virtual machine instructions, which we can then pass on to our interpreter and run all programs uh, from the command line and stuff like that. And it's gotta be a big milestone. So that's what we've been up to since the, since, uh, the past part six. Uh, and I hope uh, that you enjoy these little videos and the progress. And uh, if you're interested in stuff, I hope you've also found the decode on GitHub and maybe following along. Maybe you're even making your own version of this. That'd be cool to see. And so bye-bye uh, for now. See you later.